Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live, and I have Brother Anthony here on with us again uh, this evening, and it is always a pleasure to have this brother on. Uh, he's got some amazing insights. I love the fact that he loves Jesus Christ. He always likes to include that no matter where he's at, what he's speaking about, and that's just amazing to me as well. So, Brother Anthony, thank you for coming on with Daily Excellence. If you would, Greet the people, tell the people again how they can follow the work that you're doing, because I feel like that you're one of the few voices out there that really is taking things very seriously. Well, thank you, uh, Stephen, for letting me be on your channel again. It's always an honor uh, to be intervi interviewed by you and to be able to uh, speak to your subscribers over here. And uh, yes, anyone that's looking for us, if you want to uh, Subscribe to what we got going on here on Daily Excellence. Of course, we're on uh, our YouTube, main YouTube channel, uh, Daily Excellence. Uh, we've been trying to make a big push here lately uh, to try to get more followers over on our Rumble channel and over on Patreon. Same handle, same tag, uh, Daily Excellence. Very easy to find us. And so, yeah, that's what that's what we've been doing. Uh, we uh, house and host uh, COT over there with uh, Mike uh, Mike's permission. And so uh, we archive all his stuff over there on our um, Rumble and Patreon channels for free. So uh, you guys can check that out. And we've been doing that until they get their, uh, you know, their issues fixed over there on their website. And, uh, and of course, we have our weekly broadcasts that come up on Tuesday evenings. And then we bring guests on like you, uh, Stephen, and uh, we brought on uh, Earth Changes channel and some other guests have appeared on our channel. And so we do that and we're getting ready to start a new program here uh, within the next week or two, uh, my wife and I are both here going to be live on the channel. It's going to be something a little bit different. Uh, we're not going to be talking so much about, uh, you know, current events or anything like that. Uh, but what we, what we want to do is uh, do a duo uh, devotional with you guys and have an opportunity to actually pray with the subscribers. Because uh, we know a lot of subscribers have needs, things going on in life. Uh, and so we want to be able to minister uh, to the subscribers, not only inform people uh, like we do, but we also want to be able to, you know, minister to uh, people through prayer online. So we're going to be launching that here in the next week or two um, with my wife coming on and helping me in that area. So she she uh, has the gift of gab and can can speak a lot and is a very good prayer warrior. So I know people will be very excited to uh, be able to uh, see what she has to offer as well. Amen, brother. And I and, and one thing, guys, let me just share with you, uh, too. Brother Anthony and his wife, they're also over on Telegram. And that I actually started that up myself, and I haven't really been posting faithfully like Brother Anthony does, but they've also got a prayer room uh, on there where you can submit your prayers and things like that. Uh, I, I think that is so needful because, like Brother Anthony says, and I really appreciate, Brother Anthony, you and your wife are going to be doing more of the ministry side too, because people can hear all the gloom and doom of the things mm -hmm. that are going on in the world. And that I always called that a filler. Uh, that's kind of the reason why I got into Israeli News Live was uh, a filler. I was doing teaching and I, I remember the first time I ever did it, I was on one television program that I got started up early on. I got asked to come on this one little network. It wasn't a big one, uh, but they wanted me to do it because every day and I'm like, I have to feel anointed to speak about something. And, and so I had to quit because I just couldn't do it. And then I was on the same uh, 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 cable TV that uh, Pastor Paul Begley is on. Uh, I was on there for a year and there I only had to do it once a week. But I still felt awkward because if I, I just I can't be a stuffed shirt, you right. know, I, I have to for me, I really have to feel very passionate about what I'm teaching on before I teach on it. And, and even like this past weekend, uh, I didn't do any news. I just, it was the time of the resurrection and mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to speak on that. And I just right. really had some heavy things on my heart that I wanted to share with the people. So, but I, I really appreciate the fact that you keep that balance in there and that you're concerned, you and your wife both are very concerned for the souls of the people and want yes. to help people. So, so let me encourage you, not only the telegram, but I'm just going to really say it flat out. You know, I know Brother Anthony has his Patreon for free, but you know, that is the cheapest way you can ever support a ministry. Uh, it doesn't break the bank or anything. And, you know, and so I just encourage you uh, 
you know, you pray about it. That's the way I always say, pray about it. God lays it upon your heart and everything. That's an awesome way to be able to support the work that he and his wife do. And, uh, and they've dedicated their life to this. So I, I Thank just you. encourage that. So brother Anthony, all right. Now there is a lot of things going on in the world. And, uh, of course I've been dealing with all kinds of crazy things today. Won't get into all of that, but, uh, you brought up Taiwan and I'm sure we're going to loop through all of this together, mm -hmm. But can you share with the people um, some of the things that you're noticing going on in Taiwan? I'll throw in a, a few little two cents points that I'm aware of about Taiwan as well. But uh, but I'd like for you to just start that out, rather. Okay. Uh, well, I think we, what we've seen, uh, especially uh, on YouTube, and I'm not 100% sure if the, the news media, if the mainstream media has been pointing this out or not. Uh, I, don't, I don't watch it very much anymore. But um, we've seen over the last 48 hours, we've definitely seen a huge buildup uh, of what's going on uh, in and around Taiwan in the waters and the air. Uh, we've got hundreds of vessels out there in the water surrounding Taiwan. Uh, I want to say they had, what, 71 uh, warplanes fly over the, the island over there. Uh, and so there's been a really big... Uh, you know, big military presence. Uh, of course, they're saying that it was drills. But I think it came out today. Um, it might have been today or last night. But China has basically came out and said, all right, we know how we're going to take Taiwan. We're ready, is what they said. Uh, and so, you know, Stephen, and this is kind of the thing I was telling you before we came on here. Uh, you know, one, is it propaganda? It's possible. Uh, you know, we, we've seen this before with other conflicts. It, it could be a propaganda type thing to maybe get a response from the United States uh, in this area. Or, or two, uh, is it that we're pushing forward in the timeline? You know, a lot of people didn't think that that this whole issue, uh, I think the earliest I heard was maybe in October uh, we would see something or maybe next year we would see something. But has the timetable being pushed up? And if it is, why? What is it that they know that we don't know? But what I can tell you is, is when this does happen, and I did a video on this last year, maybe maybe even longer than that. I called it; it's called the Taiwan effect. Uh, it's going to affect us here in the United States in a very significant and severe way. Um, not so much in the area of war, um, but it is technically war. It's an economic war against the United States. Isn't really going to affect us with bombs or bullets or anything like that, but it's going to affect us in goods and services, uh, especially in the area of electronics. Uh, most of our electronics that we get for medical for medical needs comes from Taiwan. Uh, to run pumps at gas stations, to run uh, hydraulic systems like cranes and things like that that we have to build here in the United States, it comes from Taiwan. Uh, and, you know, just taking those goods out because we're not producing here in the United States, uh, you know, that's going to hurt us very significantly. You know, we take uh, for granted the water that comes out of our faucet. Well, if the hydraulic system is not available in your local uh, municipality, uh, pumps to get that water to your house, you know, we forget warm wood, forget about, you know, biological terrorism or anything like that. Uh, just cutting off Taiwan from the United States is going to be a, something that we're going to have to deal with. And so, uh, you know, is it possible, uh, Stephen, that, that we're, we're pushing up this timetable because the United States is in a more, you know, hypothetical because we have to be careful how we word things but in a more hypothetical is the united states in a more weaker position than our enemies even realize because you have to remember we were flying some balloons over and it, it came out this came out on on uh, main media that okay well those balloons just happened to be actual spy equipment and they got a good look at our infrastructure and let's yeah. just say thing you know if we're not quite up to snuff as everyone thought we were okay so is it possible that this is what's happening is this is it the reason why we have uh russia also getting ready to retake uh come back crimea again you know i mean i don't know you know i'm only i can only speculate and uh, give you a, a thesis but i can tell you that it's not if it happens it's when it happens well, that's exactly right, Brother Anthony. And and 
before it ever became public knowledge that China was going after Taiwan, we released the story about it initially. And they wanted to take it more than a year ago, about a year and a half ago is when they initially wanted to do it. Um, I remember the the uh, head of the Pacific Fleet said in a private meeting there with the Joint Chiefs, he said, we're not going, he said, China, excuse me, Taiwan will not be another Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. um, we began to move military assets out of Taiwan because China had already told us we're taking it. Mm -hmm. Now, they would like to do it without firing a shot. That's really the the, the objective. <laughs> but uh, but and then it kind of went back and forth. I, I was in, you know, I was watching what's going on, monitoring the different communiques that were in the Joint Chiefs of Staff and uh, about Taiwan. We had ran multiple exercises to see or not exercises, but through our AI system that kind of gives us an idea. How would we how would this play out if we go to war with China over Taiwan? And in every case, we would lose. Mm -hmm. uh, that was the bad part. Uh, this is also when I found out just how advanced the Chinese Navy was. They don't now they don't have as big a navy as we have as far as aircraft carriers. They don't have the number of aircraft carriers we have, but they have more subs than we have. And the technology they have is superior to ours in, in some cases. Uh, I remember the Joint Chiefs saying that it would be like the United States, United States fighting the United States in a war over Taiwan. So back about closer to the first of the year, Biden had given an official notice, not publicly, but official notice to the um, to all of the uh, CEOs of the companies in Taiwan. And he said, you got two years to get your stuff out and, mm -hmm. and do business elsewhere. Um most of those are not going to leave anyway, but some are taking the advice. And then, of course, I asked, I said, is it really two years? They said, no, there won't be two years. It'll happen before the two years. Uh, and so then I was told that we would put up a show of force, but we will ev 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 eventually allow Taiwan to fall back into China's hands. This is, though, part of a global shift. China was promised to be the next world superpower. I knew this from the Israeli intelligence four years ago, uh, when they when I was making such a fuss over the building of the uh, the, the 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 naval port in Tel uh, excuse me in Haifa, and then also Ashkelon and China being the one that gets to call all the shots. And then the Israelis told me keep my mouth shut about China, and that's when they told me they'd be the next world superpower. Now, oddly enough, Macron goes over there the other day and. <laughs> Nobody greets Macron on the plane, right? What an embarrassment for him, right, Anthony? But wow. then after this meeting that he has with China, Macron calls for Europe to maintain a strategic autonomy instead of following the U.S. and butting heads with China over Taiwan. So you're already seeing, too, NATO has already been given the command, stand down. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to happen. Now, I was told that the what... China is waiting to do strategically wise is for the United States to get bogged down in direct conflict with Russia. Not that we're not already in direct conflict. Uh, is Mike from around the world? I think he did say that we had special ops inside of Russia. Uh, I've been saying that for a while now because I knew that we were, our Navy SEALs were working in behind the lines inside of Russia. Putin knows it. So it's not, it's not like it's a secret except for the rest of the world. But at any rate, um, the issue, though, is that we're to get bogged down into the direct conflict with Russia. Once we're bogged down in that, or even in the war with uh, backing Israel against Iran in a preemptive strike, this is when China will then go after Taiwan. Yeah. Uh, that way there, we're too busy. And it's, and it's kind of funny. They call that a strategic move. But in reality, what is it? It's an easier way. For the United States to be able to say, oh, I'm sorry, we're just caught up over here. There's no way we can protect Taiwan. Biden knows full well he's in bed with the Chinese. His son's in bed with the Chinese. They've been in bed the entire time. He knows he's going to give it away. And the thing is, too, China needs Taiwan because if they're going to be the next world superpower, they need the economic structure because that's 50 percent of the global economy. Right. Is with Taiwan. Exactly. You know, you you mentioned. Uh, I started laughing uh, when you when you mentioned Macron's name, 
uh because I, I was actually thinking about this earlier today i was like when i when you when you uh messaged me and said you know let's let's do a video this week and i'm like i wonder if i was like i was thinking to myself i wonder if france is gonna pop up in our interview because i was thinking about this i was like you know when you go back in the history you know, I don't know how serious anyone's going to take France and I'm not trying to, if you live in France and, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of your country, but you know, the last time we had a big uh, issue with France, we got a, we got a statue out of it. So, you know, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying there's a history there of, you know, getting on the bandwagon, getting off. So I, I you know, when we hear they were trying to really put that out there. Well, France said this, our closest ally. I'm like, man, go back to the world, the world war one and two go back even before then. This is nothing new. We've seen this come over and over. I mean, it's, they, they, it's a fight or flight response that, you know, that government has always had. And right now it's, it's a tough time. So they're just going with somebody else that they think will protect them. Uh, but you know, who knows if, you know, if we come out on top, we might get another statue. So, uh, <laughs> that's, that's just my thought on that. There uh, you go. What, what about Sweden? And, uh, of course, Finland, we know that, uh, uh, also, um, there's two things I want to get you to comment on. And, and, uh, you know, if, if these are things that you feel comfortable going into is we know that Finland is joined up with NATO. They're, they're mm -hmm. pushing for Sweden to do it. That is a major contention, of course, for Russia. Um, and then on top of that, the Swedes are also st uh, sending in 10 of their battle tanks into Ukraine. Uh, yeah. All of this is really up in the ante of what's going to happen next. I'd like to just get some of your thoughts on that. Well, I don't I don't really know too much about Finland and Sweden. Um, I do know that economically they're, they're doing really well. Uh, and I think that for them, for those countries, my personal opinion, joining NATO is a big mistake. Uh, I think that they'll be economically ruined here pretty soon uh, because of doing that. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Um, but it does make sense that NATO would want them, as you've already stated. You know, they are bordered with Russia. There's nothing there's nothing like really uh, poking the bear even more than making the bear feel cornered. And I think that's really the strategic move is that we want NATO wants to say, hey, we got you surrounded on all sides. We can take you out. And I think that's the message, in my personal opinion, uh, that's being shed there. You also have the, you know, from a world stage, uh, you know, we talked about the BRICS nations a minute ago before we came on. You, it's really coming down to BRICS versus NATO. OK, in my personal opinion, I don't think NATO is going to win. Uh, just by just by looking at the population of the globe on who how many's got one on what on what side how many's got on the other especially when you look at uh from a weapons uh perspective Russia and uh China together have a much more technological uh, advantage with you know hypersonic technology going into G6 G7 uh, uh, generation weapons that the United States just hasn't gotten there to yet. Uh, you know, it, to me, just by looking at that without really taking a, a hard dive into it, uh, it looks like that BRICS is going to have it. And so it's kind of like BRICS is trying to build up their side. NATO's trying to build up their side. And so I think that's, you know, Sweden, Finland is just kind of adding to the tally marks for uh, NATO in that respect. And like I said, they've got money. Uh, you know, their economy is good, takes money to to get that going. And so they they need their economy as well. So that's kind of, you know, my two cents on that one. Well, I, 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 I certainly agree on that, especially, you know, I remember Trump when he was president and he was talking about the European nations that are part of NATO need to start paying their fair share. Uh, because nobody was was toting the the the, the checkbook to, to the meetings anymore. And so I can see that, yeah, that if they have to tow their share, they're going to be paying out some bucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but you bring up BRICS, and I think that that's extremely important right now because it's almost, or I, I should back up and I would say this here. I noticed that the uh, a lot of the wealthy, business owners back in the 80s and 90s begin to move all their their business structures over to China, Taiwan, all the very uh, economic 
friendly for them, the slave labor, we could call it, the sweatshops, mm -hmm. they were now getting the things manufactured for pennies on the dollar. So all the good paying jobs in America were people, especially people up north that were used to really making some very, very uh, hefty money there, was all being outsourced now over to, to China and Taiwan and Philippines, et cetera, whatever, wherever it was in the Middle East there. And I, I began, when I saw BRICS come together, I began to put together, even the China's uh, Silk Road initiative. If you look at the whole Silk Road and the BRICS is all laid out with this, and you go back to General Wesley Clark, where he says, you know, seven nations are going to be taken out in five years, which they never got to the five years, but they definitely have just about finished up with all seven nations that they wanted to, to, to disarm, disable, whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. All of these are part of that global trade initiative and it's also the very nations that you see flowing into BRICS slowly but surely. Egypt there, now Saudi Arabia, Saudi right. Arabia, then Egypt. <clears throat> Mexico is talking about joining. But if you've ever looked at the Silk Road and the map, the United States is left out. Right. Even parts of Russia is not there. Only just the western side of Russia is there. But all the eastern part, it's not there. What did they know in advance? And of course, too, all these wealthy business owners, and, and one of them, I won't call his name, but uh, nobody would really know it. But I mean, if you looked him up, you'd know who he is, was a very good friend of mine that moved his entire manufacturing process over to China. And at the time, back years ago, when I was in business, I was I was an engineer designer. So I designed several things that we, you know, I was able to do patent pending, stuff like that, and going for patent. And, but they were very, very high tech military type of things and so the government or excuse me not the government but but the friend of mine that was going to manufacture it said we can do it but we got to build it in china mm -hmm. i'm like china i want america to have jobs he said do you want to sell it or do you want to make money you know and i actually backed out of the deal because it would not be made in america right um but the sad thing is to me there was an insight they knew this was coming. They knew that the BRICS would come, was going to come in, um, you know, and this whole global shift, everything is, to me, has been known about for decades in advance, if not almost a century. And they knew that they had outlived the, the IMF. Everything has outlived its, its, its ability of life. It's a Ponzi scheme to begin with, and they're going to have to eventually crash that. And so they were already setting up that new system, getting back down to the cheap labor so that once they brought about all these global wars and they wipe everybody out that's in the way, they could start over afresh, cancel out the debts, take all your money. And by the way, that's one of the things I've listened to over and over and over from Washington is that they are going to go to a digital currency here as well. The only debate that's going on in Washington behind the closed doors right now is whether or not you get to keep some of your money that when the, when everything collapses or if they're going to wipe your bank clean. Anthony, your thoughts, my brother. Well, it uh, uh, when you talk about the BRICS nations, of course, we did news did come out this week or last week uh, that they're working on formulating a new currency because they wanted, they want to get away from the U S dollar. Um, they also talked about, I think it was Malaysia. Um, they were, were in talks with Malaysia about, you know, uh, being a part of this new currency deal because they want to get away from the U S dollar. Um, <clears throat> you know, we've got Saudi Arabia already in talks with China getting away from the U S dollar. And really, it, the interesting part about all that, what's making this possible is really our own foreign policies here with this current administration that we have. Um, you know, when we put all these sanctions on Russia, I mean, you know, that pretty well solidified the idea that we need to make this new currency because uh, what did what did Putin do when we put all these sanctions on Russia and we were trying to starve them out? He said, OK, well, I'm going to open up my oil fields and you're going to buy oil from me, but you're going to have to do it in the ruble and not in the U.S. dollar. Well, as soon as he did that, the Russian economy bounced right back. I mean, you know, and China took note of that. Everyone took note of it. now they're banding together, they're going to create a new currency. We're going to ditch the U.S. dollar, you know, because we can't work with the United States anymore because of the foreign policies. We can't work with the United States because of the sanctions. And, uh, you know, honestly, 
the world's tired of working with us because every four years our policies change. I think I think it was Mike that brought that up. You know, uh, four years you have a Republican in office, four years you got a Democrat, and and the two parties are so wild um, that it's like flipping a night's a light switch on and off. They don't want to work with us anymore. They can't. They, they need stability. Okay. And so, uh, you know, China is a better option if you're looking for stability. They just are. The United States is not. Uh, and so you have that. The creation of the digital system, you know, you talked about that. You know, we knew that they were going to have to crash the crypto market, which that did happen. Uh, you still have some people out there who, you know, have navigated through that and have, have made quite a bit of money uh, still. Um, but uh, they're going to, you know, they may be getting rid of some of the digital uh, coins that are out there, but the technology is not going anywhere. They're going to use the blockchain technology to bring about the new system uh, that we're all going to be going on under uh, should the Lord tarry. And, uh, you know, it would make sense to me. I hope not. I, I mean, I, I would hope that I have some, that we have some money left over, right? Uh, but it would make sense that they would wipe out the accounts and start everything over because what's going to happen immediately after that? UBI, that's universal basic income. That means everybody's going to get a certain amount of money. It's going to be allotted to you based upon what your stature and society is, based upon uh, what, what, what ethnicity you are, what religion you are, uh, you know, uh, social credit scores, which China does that now. Uh, that's going to be coming to the United States. You know, are, do you believe what they want you to believe? Do you say what they want you to say? If you believe what they want you to believe, you might get a little extra money, uh, the next month when you get your universal basic income, you know, Oh, did you say something? Did you mention the word, the word Jesus Christ? Oh man, you just, you might have to do with that electricity this month. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, but that's basically what it's coming down to. And that's going to be the new system. That's how they're going to control you. Uh, the idea of owning your own home and owning your own car and, owning your own business, it's going away. Everything's going to be rental. You're going to have to rent your home from the government. You have to rent your car from the government. If you want to have a business, that's great. You're going to have to rent it, though. Your licensing, your building from the government, okay? Everything is going to be, it's going to be subscribing, all right? It's kind of like right now we, you know, uh, we subscribe to uh, Netflix, you know, to watch movies, you know, who owns DVDs in their homes anymore? Nobody does. We stream them offline. Now you rent it. That's right. Okay. And then that, that's basically what's going to happen is you're going to subscribe to you, to whatever home you're in. You're going to subscribe to this, subscribe to that. And you're going to pay your fee every month out of the UBI that the government gives you. That's exactly right, brother. And, and couldn't, couldn't agree more. And, um, you know, there's one other thing, too, that I want to uh, mention. We'll kind of back up just a little bit, maybe head towards Israel a little bit before we uh, finish out the broadcast this evening. But uh, I'd gotten a report in uh, from a good friend of mine. He's a journalist in Israel that uh, that Iran, uh, they've intercept, intercept uh, intel that Iran is planning on attacking Israeli owned ships in the Gulf in response to the recent attacks in Syria. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Iran Iranian political strategist close to the Revolutionary Guard said that Iran is considering attacks against Israeli-owned ships in the region for retaliation, you know, for, for what was been going on there. And, uh, and and another thing I'll mention as well, brother, uh, and this is through the intel connections there, is that um, it I was told that uh, Russia has requested uh, the use of airspace over Iraq. Uh, and I don't know if Iraq has granted that as of yet, uh, but they've also moved in uh, troops uh, into the east side of Syria, uh, preparing for pushing the United States out of Syria. Now, that I find interesting that this intel here is. Now, it's not through the intel that I get from D.C., but uh, it's still very high level intel that uh, is even part of the meetings that, that are in D.C. as well. Mm -hmm. But. What made me believe this to be true, even though I've not seen anything, you know, I mean, at least I haven't seen it publicly as of yet spoken of Russia doing this, is that um, I knew that we would be pushed out of not only the Pacific, including not just Taiwan, but the Philippines, Taiwan, uh, uh, right even right out of South Korea, we're going to be pushed out of all these nations here by China, by Russia, 
and that also that our hegemony over the Middle East would also be challenged and we would be pushed out of the Middle East as well. Now, I was told that two years ago that this would happen. I was already being told that China was already engaged in combat fights inside of Iraq, uh, dealing with different militant groups there. They've taken some heavy losses, but yet at the same time, they were involved in skirmishes there, even going into Syria uh, to basically get their feet wet, get themselves combat hard and combat ready, but also to show those different tribal warlords there that they are the ones that are going to be controlling the tur turf here in the very near future. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know if you happen to be aware of any of these things. And of course, too, the fact that I'll throw this in here as well, but the Biden administration is going by the playbook that Trump set up with the uh, the uh Iran Israeli war and that we will do a preemptive strike on Iran that's coming and I think that the reason why I think that they're going to do that because some people have asked well Israel and Saudi Arabia have a very close relationship we have a close relationship with Saudi Arabia why the sudden change with Saudi Arabia making agreements with Iran now Israel can no longer use Saudi space or us to to attack Iran but in reality though they're still going to do this push because they need a regime change in order for the Silk Road to work better mm -hmm. for the case of Israel, that is. What are some of your thoughts on these issues here, brother? Well, uh, the quickly answer about Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, now that China is involved and uh, they're, you know, getting away from the U.S. dollar, there's no real reason for Saudi Arabia to be loyal to the United States, in my personal opinion, anymore. And we kind of knew this was coming. You know, we knew there was going to be a, a bit of a backstabbing uh, on the way. And I think that's what we're seeing on that particular front. So um, that's probably what's happening there. Uh, and we did see a missile exchange between Saudi Arabia and Israel uh, recently. And it is, and you're right, you know, there has definitely been a, a lot of chatter. And even in the mainstream has picked this up a little bit. Uh, not too much, but a little bit that there are that there is a plan for Israel to go after Iran. And uh, I mentioned this last time we had a broadcast together. You know, I, I think that uh, it will happen. I think it will be supported by the United States, but not for the same reason uh, that the Israelis would hope uh, that we would be backing them up for. I think we're, we're it's just more like we're using them at a you know, we're using them at a proxy uh, for a different agenda. Uh, but, you know, one of the things I wanted to bring up and, and maybe get your thoughts on this is when all of this transpired with uh, the attacks over in uh, uh, Syria and Israel, when we saw that exchange and we saw the meeting with uh, China and Malaysia, uh, don't forget China also just eradicated, what, $20, 20 billion dollars of African debt um, around the same period. Also, around the same period that we found out that uh, Saudi Arabia is going to move to the U.S. dollar, same period we're finding out that Mexico may uh, bail out of the North American Accord. Uh, all of this transpired, uh, Stephen, around the period of Trump's indictment. Okay, and I want to I want to throw this at you because there were, I mentioned this last Tuesday on my channel. And I, I purposely had held off doing any videos because I, I wanted to see what everybody else had to say, honestly. Uh, and there was only one channel that picked up on what I picked up on. And it was this. And, and it was that the day before Trump's indictment, they dismissed all the jurors for a month for making any decisions. That same day, when you follow the news... That's when news came out of everyone ditching the U.S. dollar. That's also when news started coming out of things that may make Americans start looking in a direction that they don't want us looking at. Okay, it's kind of like reminded me of 9-11 a little bit, where the day before 9-11, $2 trillion came up missing. It's about as far as I'll go in that, in that, but you probably remember that. So we have this announcement that comes out the day the day before Trump's uh indictment of uh, these countries that are getting ready to ditch the U.S. dollar, and they don't want us looking in that that area, and that's my personal opinion, okay? I have no, I don't have intel, I don't have, you know, anybody out there researching stuff. This is just me watching and me thinking and being observant, okay? 
The very next day, all of a sudden, these jurors are supposed to be gone for 30 days on deliberation. The next thing you know, boom, Trump's indicted. And the news media, indictment, indictment, indictment. That's all we saw. There was nothing else going on on TV. But while that was happening, and while we were focused over here, that's when the bombs started flying in the Middle East with Israel and Syria. That's when the deals started getting made. And I mentioned all this last Tuesday, like, here's the stuff you missed. And I mean, I listed off like 20 different things. And these were major, major moves that were taking place during that time under this cover of whatever it is that was going on here. Because honestly, you know, I don't know if anybody even really wanted to touch Donald Trump, you know, but and it doesn't matter. I don't I know people have different thoughts and I'm not here to be political. I'm not endorsing or supporting or doing any of that. Any of that. I'm just saying. Look at the, there was a smoke screen here. And the next yeah. thing we know. All of this has taken place. And so it was almost as if, you know, because I remember the day before I was thinking, I was like, man, they're just going to sweep this under the rug and be done with it because, you know, uh, it's just not going the way they thought it would. People aren't really out in the streets protesting. They're not burning down buildings. You know, it's just, it just didn't go the way they really wanted it to go. I thought they were going to be done with it. But then when the news broke of these countries getting ready to ditch the U.S. dollar and things were starting to happen, they really didn't. We weren't. They weren't ready, in my personal opinion, for the American public to come face to face with that just yet. Then the next day, we got this big old week long uh, disturbance on the news, and that was all that was played. You noted there was no other news that came out, and so uh, I kind of wanted to bring that out and see what your thoughts were on that one because that's what I noticed, and there was only one other channel out there. Um, that had brought that out, but nobody else was talking about that. Well, you're exactly right, Brother Anthony. And this is, you know, everything I've learned from the intel community is that they control the media. And uh, and when you need to get the people's attention on something else so that we're not paying attention to what's happening in the Middle East, there's no better way to do it than to make sure the media covers the story you want them to cover. And I think they made bigger the issue out of Trump just for that case, because this is the reason why. The patriot movement, the evangelical movement in this nation stand with Israel for the most part. Mm -hmm. And because of that, if you're going to have Israel do something that would be questionable in the eyes of those people there, you need to make sure that you can divert that attention somewhere else. And so Trump was the ideal one because they're also very supportive of Trump. Right. No matter which way they may feel things have went, they still are very supportive of him. So I think that was a brilliant observation you made uh, because that is very status quo. In fact, the Intel uh, individual that I have worked with in Washington for the last six years his brother is a Hollywood producer. And I sat with him for a week straight, not every single, well, we were together because of some work that I was doing that he was there as well at the time. And uh, I really found out just how controlled Hollywood is uh, and how the government, they work in unison together. And, and, and he was afraid. Uh, Because I actually asked, there was one particular story that I knew that uh, he knew more in-depth details about the collapse of the Soviet Union, because his brother worked with the intel and was directly involved, was there at the Vatican, etc. And I said, you know, why haven't you ever did a documentary on that? And he said, there's certain things you don't touch. He said, because Hollywood is controlled. And uh, so, yeah, that's... What you're seeing is the way that narrative will go. When they want to keep your attention somewhere else, they will. Because uh, especially this whole situation right now with uh, with with the Israel and all the political turmoil in the country, uh, that's got the people watching like crazy and divided and stuff. So yes, they couldn't start dealing with uh, these these conflicts over in Syria. Uh, hitting Lebanon, hitting Gaza, uh, you know, and granted, yes, did 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 the Hamas fire in all the rockets to start with? Hamas actually fired in 130, not 30 rockets, 130 rockets into Israel. 
Uh, so, yes, they're getting ready to attack Israel. They're getting ready to, to give a bigger war over there. And they know that when they go to strike back, yeah, they do catch a lot of repercussion. But at the same time, Israel's already been hammering on Iran for a long time uh, in Syria, and they have not really retaliated uh, over the last couple of years. Syria has not got involved in it, even though they've lost a lot of people. So it's coming to head now, and they need a distraction to be able to carry that out. Um, and, you know, ultimately it worked. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's where it's at. Uh, any last words, brother? Before we, because I'm gonna I'm gonna get this up tonight because I want to see the, get the people to see the the things that that, we, that you've shared with us tonight. But uh, any other thoughts you'd like to share? You know, my only thought is, you know, I want to I, I like to bring everything back uh, to the Bible, you know, and back to biblical things, and you know, everything that we're seeing right now it really does point to the edge of eternity the end of the end of this age that we're in. And, you know, you know, we had made the comment earlier or I made the comment earlier that it seemed like that maybe things are being propelled a little bit faster, maybe a little bit ahead of, of a uh, time schedule. And uh, it may be, you know, uh, you know, I, like I said, we, we both talked about this. Uh, we like to uh, tend to stay away from dates and times and things like that, but we'd have definitely seen a much stronger uh, escalation in the last uh, seven days uh, in into to cryptocurrency, uh, digital currencies, uh, the buildup of this BRICS nations and people, uh, you know, ditching the U.S. dollar and the, the wars and rumors of wars. We've definitely seen a very huge uptick, and we haven't even talked about, uh, you know, we didn't even get into discussion about weather and earthquakes and all that stuff tonight on any of it. Um, but you know, when we look at what God, what Jesus had said about the last days, you know. Uh, he said that in these last days that he would have to speed up time, uh, shorten the days or lessen the days, depending on the translation you read. But he had to lessen the days for the elect's sake, unless no flesh be saved. And so maybe we're in that we're entering that time where, you know what, we may things may come a little bit faster than we even uh, anticipate because we're getting to that place where if something doesn't take place uh, in these end times, um, timeline we may face ourselves in a mass global extinction uh and that's not biblical that's not what god wants and he's not god's not going to allow that to happen uh and so we could be seeing something like that come uh, along the way but no matter what happens uh it's really important that you as the viewer this evening as you're watching this uh that you have a very strong and so, uh, sustainable relationship with Jesus Christ, you know, not this on and off thing that we're kind of used to uh, <clears throat> in American culture. You know, I know we're just coming off of Holy Week. You know, and every year when we get into Holy Week, I, I find it kind of interesting how uh, churches in America always try to put their best foot forward uh, on this particular week. Uh, trying to gather as many people as they can with Easter egg hunts and then renting helicopters and uh, just doing some really wild stuff. Um, you know, uh, trying to get those people who don't normally come to church uh, to come in, you know, uh, but really as the body of Christ, we really should be trying to be that exuberant all year round, uh, not just mm -hmm. one time a year. And we're, we're at that place now where the window is beginning to shut uh, and we don't have a whole much, we don't have much time left. And not only do you not have time uh, to go out and get people saved, you don't have time uh, for yourself to get yourself right. You needed to seize the moment while you can take care of your own spiritual housing. Uh, make sure that you're not in sin. Make sure that you're, uh, you know, giving your life fully over to God. And if you've got sin in your life, you need to repent of it, turn away from it. Uh, quit doing whatever you're doing, quit looking at whatever you're looking at, quit, you know, engaging in those relationships, whatever it is, because, you know, a fleeting moment of sin is not going to be worth the eternity, eternal repercussions that are to come. It's not going to be worth the stuff that you're going to have to face here on this planet, because you're really going to need that relationship with Jesus Christ to make it through the next steps that we've all got coming. You know, there's there's going to be two outcomes of this. And one outcome is you're either going to be by yourself going through the days of sorrow, going through 
the woes of this world that are about to come up. And I don't know how, you know, we could, we could go into a bunch of theological debates tonight. Uh, I'm sure uh, on here, there's probably people who believe in trib, mid trib, post, uh, don't believe in it at all, whatever. Uh, we're not going to get into that, but no matter what, however your end times theology is, the, the ending of that is you need to be prepared. Okay. You either need to be prepared to be removed from this world by what people call the rapture or the taking away of the church, or you need to be prepared to face persecution, depending on how you believe, or you need to be prepared to make it all the way through, which we know that when you get to the end of it all, there's not going to be too many of us left. Okay. Whatever it is, you got to be prepared for whatever is going to happen. And that all roads lead to Jesus Christ on this. You have to be prepared. And so I can't really stress enough the importance of having a healthy relationship with Jesus Christ, not just only having for your sins forgiven and being saved, which is so important, but having a relationship so that when God can speak into your life and say, Hey, just like you did Joseph, okay, Joseph and Mary, when King Herod was coming to come and kill Jesus and all the newborn, when the angel of the Lord can wake up in the middle of the night and say, Get up and go. Okay, you need to have that kind of relationship. Amen. That way you can be on the move when God tells you, Hey, your area is unsafe. You need to go or stay put. Okay. God will give us as children of God. He's not going to forsake us. He's not going to leave us. He's going to give us exactly what we need to face what we need for some of us. We talked about this on my channel last Tuesday. Some of us, he's going to give us what we needed to, to have to survive. And for some of us, he's going to give us exactly what we need to face persecution. Even if it leads to death, it's going to give us exactly what we need to handle those moments. You're, he's not going to leave you. He's going to be there with you the entire way. He'll supply your yeah. needs. He already he knew what season you were going to be born in. And so he's made you for such a time as this. Okay. So everything has already been laid out before you. Everything that you need is already there. It's up to you to receive it. Amen. Amen. And I'll just add one little short comment to that, I, because I, I, no way to capitalize on what you've just said. I think, Brother Anthony, you've really laid it out beautifully for the people. Um, when we look at the scripture, though, as you quoted there, you know, that he would have to cut the work short or there'd be no flesh saved. From all the intel that I have gathered in the last several years here, one of the objectives is to bring the population of humanity down so low mm -hmm. through war, famine, uh, and including uh, viruses that would be coming from the permafrost. And, you know, Mike's talked about some of the ones that are there, mm -hmm. the flesh eating, et cetera. Um, there are those that have been worked on that they will release intentionally. That's how demonic Satan is. And basically Satan is, out, as the scripture says, he's a roaring lion doing what? Seeking whomever he may devour. And we normally look at that even as a spiritual aspect. But if Jesus talked about there would be no flesh saved, could it be that there that he's actually having to cut the work short because there he knows that Satan is just trying to wipe out humanity as a whole? Mm -hmm. So uh, I agree, brother. Let's um, let's close in prayer together and uh, and and I just encourage you uh, if you're listening and everything. And I've seen people the different faiths and everything because there's all kinds of faiths that watch this broadcast here. I had a Hindu man one time that sent me an email saying, you know, Steve, he said, I've listened to you for years. He said, one day out of nowhere, you just you just did a prayer for the salvation of souls there. And you don't normally do that. He said, but it touched me in such a powerful way. He said that me as a Hindu gave my life to Jesus Christ. That's great. So, Let's pray together, Father. Heavenly Father, we just ask you tonight, Lord. I want to thank you that Brother Anthony has come here to be with us tonight, Lord, to speak on the things that are going on in this life, dear God. But also, Father, not leaving out the the, the urgent need for the salvation of, of souls, for the rededication, and, and not just rededication, but as Brother Anthony so beautifully put, Father God, just making sure that you're you're a hundred percent ready to go that everything that and as he said that 
God will give you whatever you have need of to endure whatever the, the things that are laid before us uh, here in the near future, dear God. So we, we ask, Father God, that if there is those that are out there, though, that do not know Jesus Christ as their own Savior, as their, you know, and I'm not just talking about reciting a prayer. I'm talking about a real sincere touching him by faith like the woman did that had the blood issue you know you want to touch him by faith really mm -hmm. reaching out and touching jesus christ by faith and believing you know i ask that you would consider that tonight and we ask it in the name of jesus christ god bless them father god and then lead them wherever they would need to be to go to that they might get encouragement they could write us they could write brother anthony uh, whatever the case may be, if it's a sister or something you're going through, uh, maybe Brother Anthony's wife, you could write her and, and you know, she could help you with that. Uh, or a brother, whatever the case may be. I know some of the, uh, well, Father, I'll just close in prayer and we'll we'll just make a couple other comments before closing. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, above all other names. Amen. And Brother Anthony, I will say, I, some of the videos i've done recently over on Danoon institute where i do teachings at and some of the testimonials has really caused an outpour of people wanting to be prayed for that's good um, so people are deaf desperately in need people are going through struggles in life uh yeah. and i remember i discussed the issue i did a video called um oh gosh what was it uh it was it's i used a modern term that they call it intrusive thoughts that's what i called mm -hmm. it and uh, and I really helped break that down where people would understand what that really is. And um, and I got a message from one brother that was suffering because I actually mentioned about the pornography and things like that that people get caught up into. And um, and, you know, so there, there's a lot of people suffering with a lot of different things, you know, and they don't have to be bound. Nope. And that's what a lot of people don't realize. You don't have to be bound. What you need is a revelation that you're free. And when you have the revelation that you're free, I'm not saying you won't still make a mistake here and there. Right. But you're no longer bound. Right. That's the difference. It's the revelation that Jesus Christ set you free. And then you that you will you will feel those chains drop from you then. Then you will know you don't have to do any of these things. Because so many people, they feel like, I, I just have to do this. You know, I, the devil keeps making me do it, you know. No, mm -mm. he can't make you, but you can get caught from that mindset of just thinking that that's what it is. Right. You know, but once you've got that revelation that you're free and that Jesus Christ has already paid it, it's over. Right. It's over. Yeah. The, the, the bound is the, <clears throat> bi the, the, the binding of Satan has no more power over you. Right. It's like the uh, and I and I quote this on my channel from time to time as just a reminder for the people, but it was like the, what the late, the late Billy Graham said in one of his sermons. And he said this, that God in heaven is not waiting to smite you. And he's not waiting to condemn you as you may right. feel. Uh, Cause you know, we know the devil likes to come and put cast con uh, condemnation, which we know the words of Jesus say, he didn't come into this world to condemn the world. Yeah. Uh, but so, but God's not waiting in heaven to smite you or to condemn you or to send you to hell, but he's in heaven waiting to embrace you. He's waiting yes. for you to come to him. He wants to love on you. He, he doesn't want you to try to get right first, then go to him. No, he wants you, what does the scripture say? As you are. That's okay? right. Come to him as you are. Let him clean you off. Just as, you know, a child goes outside and gets muddy, what happens? If you're a good parent, your kid comes in. You go and you bathe your kid. Okay. That's what, that's what our father wants to do for us. And so, you know, you know, maybe you're tonight, you're watching this and you're concerned for everything, but you just don't feel adequate. You just don't feel like you're worthy. Jesus thought you were worthy. That's why he yeah. died for you. And even maybe you, you live this Christian life and you've fallen away. If you're still living, if you're still drawing breath, it's not too late to get back onto that. And like I've mentioned before, you know, we don't have to go through all these hoops. Once we forgive, repent of what we've done, God restores us right back to where we are and we continue on our journey. So. Amen. Amen. That's all I got. <laughs> God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And if there's anything we can do to help you with, 
uh, I'll I'll post in the uh, comment section below too for you or the description below I should say uh, ways where you can actually reach out to Brother Anthony as well uh, and uh, and of course you already know how to contact us here uh, so especially if it's about prayer please always note in the description box there about their prayer because hundreds of emails come in every day but I will look for those type of emails. So yes, God bless you. Thank for you for us listening. as well on our uh, telegram, our prayer room. If you haven't done that, make sure you get over there. Uh, Kathleen's the one who runs that for us. And she's part of the minist ministra ministration team over at uh, council of time. So she's been helping us out uh, getting those prayer requests in. So. Amen. Amen. Sounds great. God bless you, brother Anthony. Thank you guys for watching. Have a blessed evening.